Break for Gems, or more commonly known as BFGs, is the most popular way of earning gems for new players. This is because it allows anyone to earn gems for free by breaking someone else's farmables. A win-win situation. They require at least 1-2 to two mag plants and a builder lock. But did you know that back in the olden days, even before this mag plant builder locks combination was used, BFGs already existed? Let's talk about the true history of BFGs. Before I proceed on the video, I just want to put out a short disclaimer that the information shown in this video may not be as accurate as it could have been. Unfortunately, I was not able to get in touch with the players that could have been helpful in the making of this video. Thus, most or if not all information shown in this video are reliant from publicly accessible sources and nothing is in any way exclusive information. So let's proceed on to the video. BFGs have been so popular for years and most players that are able to afford the necessary resources needed have at least built one or even more. But why is it popular? What exactly makes it popular? Well, you see, in an economy-driven game like Rotopia, where being rich is crucial, many players always try to make use of any method available to profit. And the opportunity that BFGs presented gives rise to so much potential for profit. BFGs are simple. There are the owners of the BFGs and the breakers. The owners provide the farmables for the breakers while the breakers, well, break these farmables for the owners. The owners would later receive all the seeds and the farmables dropped from the efforts of the breaker, while the breakers get to keep the gems they earn from breaking them. It's simple, but how exactly do both sides win from a scenario like that? Well, for the owners, there is a multitude of reasons why they benefit from this without actually breaking their own farmables and getting gems. But one of the most common reasons is seed profit. Seed profit is when you earn a significantly higher amount of seeds from your previous seed count. As for the breakers, I think you know, gems. A valuable asset which helps you earn world locks. Now that you know why BFGs are so popular, let's go back in time and let me show you the early years of BFGs. It's year 2016 when a player named Chankit came up with the idea of Break for Gems. Chankit created the world Chankit. Players used to visit and earn gems in this world back in the day, and its popularity grew even bigger when it was renamed to Trust Corp. Trust Corp was the OG BFG in 2016 to 2017, just a year before magplants were introduced. It was really popular and visited by a lot of players back in the day, including myself. The world had a lot of breakers that would come to the world whenever the owner or the admins were online, as it was beneficial for those looking forward to earning free gems. Unfortunately, in early 2017, Shankit departed from Trust Corp and a player named Tvior took over. A month later, Trust Corp officially closed due to reasons unknown. Now let me explain how the early versions of BFGs worked. Depending on the farmable selected by the breaker, they were required to deposit a certain amount of world locks. This is so that if they ran away and stole the farmables in sort of scam, the owner would not lose any profit. After depositing the world locks in a display box, the owner would give them the farmables. The breakers could only break 200 farmables at a time and choose whether to continue receiving more after they finish that 200 or stop. If they choose to stop, they'll get their world locks back. Unlike today's BFGs, the rooms of the breakers do not come in the form of only three box and a public small lock. 
but rather it was similar to that of the rooms in Break 4 XP Worlds back in the day. And like I said earlier, mag plants did not exist back in the day and therefore there was no automatic collection of seeds. If there was no mag plant, how could owners ensure that the breakers would return the exact amount of seeds that they got from breaking? Here's where one of the main rules of Trust Corp comes in. This one rule was very important that if you failed to follow it intentionally or accidentally, the admins wouldn't allow you to further break any more blocks. Trust Corp requires its breakers to return an average count of 54 seeds for every 200 blocks. Yes, you would need to give at least 54 more or less seeds before you receive another 200. Any breaker who returns a suspiciously low amount of seeds, especially breakers who return 40 seeds and below, would not be allowed to continue any longer. This needs to stop now. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop. As they would lose world locks that way. The average seed count was also based on Beastly's Grotopia farming calculator, which up to this day is still a useful tool. Even after Trust Corp closed down, players still continued to offer Break 4 Gem services for farmable owners. This didn't last too long until the February of 2018, when mag plants were introduced. Even before they were sold in the store, when it still only existed in the previews, some players were already thinking of how to revolutionize BFGs using Magplants. Magplant 5000 is such a powerful tool as it allows the automatic collection of blocks and seeds. Furthermore, its remote feature allowed owners to directly place any block coming from the Magplant storage. It acted like some sort of wireless machine. Most importantly, Builder Locks allowed any player to receive the Magplant remote. Having all of these was like having puzzle pieces fall into place. Different items working perfectly with one another to create a new generation of BFGs. Mikey-kun <laughs> As soon as Magplants were released in 2018, BFGs took Grotopia by storm. The term BFG was invented by the owner of Trust Corp Tvior. Aside from the term BFG, Tvior had also two other terms in mind which were FGB and FGW. FGB stands for Free Gems Break while FGW stands for Free Gems World. However, according to Tvior, those words were already taken thus he proceeded with the term BFG or Break for Gems. Tvior also created the World BFG Link alongside with several admins to assist as BFGs were quickly on the rise in early 2018 due to the release of Magplants. While BFGs were on the rise, a major issue was also on the rise. Auto farming. A macro, the thing that allows auto farming to happen, is a programmable pattern which allows a device to perform repetitive tasks such as mouse clicking, mouse movements, keystrokes, and other types of inputs. For auto farming, the players install an application that allows them to create macros and instructs them to create a pattern that will allow their character to place and break blocks repeatedly without them even present. Auto farming has been a long recurring issue before BFGs. However, when BFGs were introduced, the issue started getting worse. BFGs ultimately gave the players an incentive to auto farm. Unlike regular farming, BFGs are extremely slow. 
if you want to earn 10,000 gems from BFGs alone, you'd have to sit there placing and breaking blocks in a two block space for hours. It's not only tiring, but boring. Thus, most of these auto farmers are usually found in BFG worlds. Some owners would even allow and encourage players to auto farm as long as they could pay a price. This became a huge issue, causing the Gortopia team to impose the controversial rules and guidelines for BFGs. Due to the continuous rise in auto farmers in game, the team decided to impose an official set of rules for BFGs that the owners have to follow in order to mitigate auto farming. The team expects the owners to be actively vigilant for any auto farmers in the world. Any world owner found with auto farmers in their BFG world will receive punishments for it. For the first offense, the owner of the world will be given a warning. For the second offense, the world and its owner will be temporarily banned for 7 days and for the last offense, the world and its owner will be temporarily banned for 15 days. Besides world owners, admins will also receive the same punishments for having some level of responsibility. This later caused heated debates between players for months, especially on the Grotopia forums. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. I know guys with none of that worth 10 of you. I've seen the footage. The only thing you really fight for is yourself. One side would argue that these rules would help lessen the auto pharmacy in game, while the latter would argue that it is unfair. It was deemed unfair due to the fact that it is Ubisoft's full responsibility to take care of the auto farmers and not the owners. Secondly, there is no way that BFG owners would be able to monitor their BFG worlds all the time, especially if they own more than one. Many BFG owners were against taking responsibility for any other farmers that could be in their world. The controversy lasted for a long time, and in 2020, it eventually started cooling down. The rules were left unchanged for three years, and finally, in January of 2022, the team released an updated list of rules for BFGs. The punishments remain the same, but the guidelines are now much more specific and tackles different possible scenarios. In case the owner is caught intentionally allowing auto farmers in their BFGs, they will be permanently suspended without any warning. Any world admin that is also caught to be involved would also be permanently suspended. If the world admin is found to have no knowledge about the illegal activities happening in the world, they will not punish them. In case the BFG of the world owner is caught to have auto farmers, despite their active monitoring of their BFGs, they wouldn't be sanctioned. Lastly, if the world owner is banned for having auto farmers in their world but is cooperative in following the team's instructions, they may open a ticket to support and appeal their ban. Their case will be investigated and if reconsidered to be innocent, the punishment will be lifted and the world will be reopened. <sighs> BFGs have grown so much, haven't they? What used to be Trust Corp and a handful of managers has grown to become a popular thing not only beneficial to everyone but detrimental to the economy. Oh, Trust Corp brings back memories. But you know what else will make you bring back memories? When you subscribe to Jim and then in the next 10 years, you'll be like, Oh, I was Jim's first early subscribers. I am special. Of course, I'm just kidding. Subscribe! <laughs>